Today, Ryzen supports a new memory type. I can't believe this is needed to stop your GPU from melting. RX 8000 GPUs are actually a huge upgrade, and here it is everyone, AMD's upcoming Ryzen CPU is the quote, ultimate processor for elite gaming. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that AMD officially released their X870 and X870e motherboards. And in that video, as I also discussed, they now support one-click AMD Expo memory up to DDR5-8000. Well, it looks like there's now one new thing that these new motherboards, or at least some of them do support. As you can see right here, it says MSI X870E motherboard support QDIM memory, CU DIM, Q, we'll just call it QDIM for now, QDIM memory with AMD's Ryzen 9000 and 8000 CPUs. Now, for those who may not know, WCCF Tech actually goes over it fairly well. Basically, QDIM or Clocked Unbuffered Dual Inline Memory Module Standard utilizes a clock driver to regenerate the clock signal to enhance stability and help the RAM modules reach higher frequencies. Basically, as we get higher and higher frequencies with these new DDR5 chips, they're starting to run into signal issues that this will apparently help. And as you can see right down here, MSI's representative and in-house overclocker Topic has verified that the X870e platform will indeed debut with QDEM compatibility, but it's expected to be exclusive to the Ryzen 9000 and Ryzen 8000 series CPUs, with the Ryzen 7000 not being supported due to compatibility issues. At least for now, I actually saw in another report that they are apparently maybe potentially trying to work on making Ryzen 7000 also supported, but at least for now, it's only Ryzen 9000 and Ryzen 8000. Ultimately, I'd argue that QDIM isn't really necessary here, especially with the fact that they really only seem to support DDR5-8000. Now, with some really big overclockers, there is at least a chance that they will be able to get even higher than that, and maybe they will ultimately need it, so at least I will say it's good to see. And you can learn exactly how computer memory actually works inside Brilliant's awesome online course called How Technology Works. If you haven't checked out Brilliant yet, they sponsored today's video with the free trial for any of my viewers hoping to learn computer science the way it was meant to be tall, which is by actually getting in there and doing it yourself with their engaging puzzles that I've got to say make learning easier than ever. Whether you want to jump in the world of AI with their course on large language models, or maybe you'd prefer developing your mind to think like a programmer with one of their multiple programming courses. Brilliant has these and a ton more courses designed specifically to build a set of skills that you can take with you anywhere. Plus, they have one of the best mobile apps I've ever seen so you can learn at home or on the go. And when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll not only get a free 30-day trial, but you also get 20% off their annual premium. Once again, that's that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code right here. And next up for today, I never thought I'd see the day that a $70, almost $80 device could be marketed as a device to make sure your GPU doesn't catch fire. That's right, as you can see right here, it says Thermal Grizzly's nifty gadget can prevent NVIDIA 16 pin connector meltdowns. Now, I will go ahead and say this isn't made specifically for that. This is more or less for people who really like overclocking their GPUs, being able to see certain power, things like that. But this is something that has been included. As you can see right here, it says Thermal Grizzly upgraded its WireView GPU hardware power consumption monitoring device that connects directly to your GPU's 12 VHBWR connector. WireView GPU Pro retails for $76.19 and it's available at the company's website. And this is the part where it gets pretty wild. You can see right here, it says the WireView GPU Pro gets additional sensors for added functionality. The device allows you to track your graphics card's internal temperatures at the power connector, check to see if the power connector is inserted correctly, or if you're even using the correct cable, and send an audible alarm if something is wrong. In addition to these features, you could also connect two additional temperatures sensors to monitor the ambient temperature of other areas of your GPU, helping you keep everything in check. Now, I'm not saying that if you own an RTX 4090 or anything like that, you should run out and buy one of these. In my opinion, this just adds even more complexity to it with more potential for failure. Not that you shouldn't buy it, just 
only buy it if you're looking to really overclock it and you want to see what the temps are and things like that. Like I said, I'm not actually suggest you buying this specifically so your GPU doesn't melt or anything like that. And supposedly the newer connector has effectively fixed that. Like I've said multiple times, they've taken at least the biggest part of it to me is the fact that they've taken the sense pins further back. So if it isn't all the way connected, it simply won't power on. Still, it's just wild to me to see a product that's at least partially made to ensure you don't melt your GPU. And next up, it looks like AMD's RDNA 4 may have been delayed, but the reasoning behind it is actually great news for anyone hoping to purchase one of AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs. As you can see, this story was originally leaked by Moore's Law is Dead, and he sort of has some proof at least that he's speaking with someone actually from AMD, but I'll get to that in the next story. Either way, this one is really interesting. As you can see right here, according to Source 1, it says, I'm sorry about this, but I, AMD partner, just got an email from AMD that stated RDNA 4 is almost certainly getting pushed back to Q1 2025. The reason stated is that they need to get rid of N31 before RDNA 4 launches. They have an oversupply problem and RDNA 4 is a much better price to performance. And it's obviously that last bit that's really interesting. According to Moore's Law is Dead, RDNA 4's ray tracing is actually better than not only the 7900 XT, but the 7900 XTX. And in fact, that RDNA 4 is actually way better than any of those. It basically makes them completely null and void, specifically because of how good it is price to performance. The top end RDNA 4 may not be able to beat the 7900 XTX GPU in regular rasterization. He does claim that it beats it in ray tracing, but if it even gets slightly close yet is significantly cheaper, that would obviously be a huge blow to current gen GPUs, as well as Nvidia's current gen and potentially even their next gen cards. Of course, everyone knows that RDNA 4 from pretty much all the rumors and AMD all but completely guaranteed it themselves, RDNA 4 is not competing on the high end. But if price to performance is this good that they're basically scared to release it because they have too many N31 GPUs, that could be a really big deal. And you can actually see, according to this, the second source is basically confirming the exact same thing. They confirm that they have a huge RDNA 3 oversupply problem right now. And this more or less has been stated the Q1 2025 with yet another source. Basically, RX 8000 is looking to be way faster than anyone thought, and it's set to be a huge price to performance champ. And lastly for today, we're finally starting to get some huge leaks on AMD's next-gen X3D chips. As you can see, this one also comes from that new video from Moore's Law is Dead, and you can see right here that this is pretty clearly a marketing slide from AMD, which, like I said, is at least proof that Moore's Law is Dead is speaking with someone within AMD. But regardless, also as you can see, we actually have the box for the upcoming Ryzen 7 9800X3D. Of course, it looks fairly similar with some color changes. Definitely not a bad box design, but that isn't the biggest stuff here. That is right here. There's a few details we have right here, apparently coming from the launch kit. First up, as you can see, it says the 9800X3D is listed on a 2024 product page, while the 9950 and 9900X3D are not. And of course, if you follow this channel, you know that that's not a big surprise. We saw a leak earlier on that the 9800X3D would be releasing first, with the 9950 and 9900X3D releasing a little bit later. And of course, if you like keeping up with all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. Either way, there's actually more proof of this because the 7800X3D has had some pretty wild price action, and as you can see, that suggests the stock is running low ahead of a potential 9800X3D launch. Basically, it is likely coming and coming soon. Next up, we have right here claiming the 9800X3D is referenced as having 104 megabytes of cache multiple times. This one obviously isn't much of a surprise, but the one that is a little bit surprising 
is right here where it says the 9800X30 is referenced as being, quote, designed for increased frequencies. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can actually overclock it, but that it does at least come with higher clocks. And then finally, the biggest thing here, once again, this comes from details from a launch kit, apparently from AMD, and according to this, it says that multiple times terms like the best and ultimate processor for elite gaming are stated as ways to market the 9800X3D around its launch. And as he states, that suggests the 9800X3D will be the top X3D product when it launches. Ultimately, if you were disappointed like I was in Ryzen 9000's actual real world performance, this may just make up for it. And of course, this could be terrible news for Intel's next gen. So while that does it for today, which Ryzen 9000 X3D chip are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.